Hi there. Good morning and welcome on this sunny Saturday morning. It's 20 past 8 in the morning, 17th of July 2021. And my computer weather thing is telling me it's already 20 degrees Celsius outside and it's forecast to get up to 30. I do not know what that is in Fahrenheit, but a quick Google search should tell you. Um, this is what I'm working on at the moment, but before I start work on that, I thought you might like to see this. I finished my insect yesterday and the colours look a little bit washed out on here. Um, in some places and other places a bit more vibrant, but you'll get the idea. It's turquoises, turquoise and blue and um, yellows and oranges and reds. And I'm really, really, really quite happy with this. There are bits that I'm not happy about, which are around here where the blues um, sort of like bled all, all accumulated around the edge and created this very dark line. But it is what it is and I'll work with it. Um, and really it, I did it to try out these um, Ecoline brush pens that I had yesterday. And um, I'm hoping to get the other half of the set tomorrow. But stupid me, thought I'd try and get the delivery advanced till today. And by mistake, made it later than it was. So I got in touch with Amazon and they've said they're going to tell the carriers to deliver it as soon as possible. So uh, by the end of day tomorrow, hopefully. If not, well, hey ho, it's only 24 hours. But, you know, I'm eager. I'm keen to have the rest, complete my swatch chart. So I'm really quite pleased with that. I used um, a very pale grey um, Unipin pen to draw the design and those lines have practically disappeared into the colours, which I really enjoy. I did darken around the claws um, and um, at the feet or claws at the end of the legs and um, just to bring them out because they'd faded so much and you know they were so pale. So there's that one. Uh, this is what I sort of was playing with yesterday. I do have a thing about mushrooms. I really do like mushrooms and they're the perfect thing to work with um, these colours. Oh, I just noticed something I wanted to do. Um, these, and what I'm using here is a different colour pen and it is a little bit darker than the grey. But I actually think it'll be okay. It's one of the Chameleon Fine Liners, which are not water, um, waterproof or waterfast. They're water soluble. So my theory to test is, and I may be a bit crazy for doing all of these, is to um, see what happens when I use water soluble medium with them. And if this kind of neutral colour will just disappear. There we are, it's a bit better. I like areas that are small that I can work with. So it's just a test and see. I've already got tons of colours on my palette. You might be able to see here if I swish it over. I was working with these yesterday, so I got loads out, although I may rattle and get some others that I haven't got, but I think I'm, I'm good to go for now, put it that way. And I've got a couple of brushes out. The one I'm using is a zero and I've got a two as well if I need a bigger, uh, for bigger areas. The problem with the bigger brushes, I find it's a lot harder to get these um, kinds of gradients going on. So, yeah, let me just got to decide what colours I'm going to use and where. Um, I said I want to see what happens with these lines because I have these um, fine liners in my stash and I've got um, Stadler ones as well, Stadler Triplus and I thought it'd be quite nice because they I know they react with water as well. I just thought it'd be quite nice to potentially see if we can see what would happen and if I can make use of this property or if it would help instead of the grey because the grey is is lovely but I'm looking perhaps using colours that would tie in with whatever colours I'm using in my 
art at the time. I do want to get this a bit darker around this edge as well. See if I can get these to blend. So this is a bit of a departure for me with these ones, is to see if I can, how this works. Because yesterday I was working mainly with, um, you know, colours that were very similar on the colour wheel. Um, analogous colours, shades and so on. So this is a bit different for me. Sorry about my arm going back and forth. Just moving my tissue out the way so I'm not crossing over that way. I keep forgetting to do this. You'd think I'd remember by now, wouldn't you? So yesterday, it didn't get as warm yesterday as I think it was anticipated to. But, um, and I, I spent most of the day potching with art. I think potching is a kind of word we use here, or I do, whether I picked it from the family, whether it's a um, a Welsh kind of thing. But it means messing about with, or when you're pottering around, might be a better way of saying it. And um, I certainly did spend some time yesterday just pottering around with art. And then late afternoon, I went and watched, um, started binge watching, um, what was it, Lincoln Rhyme, The Hunt for the Bone Hunter? Oh, not the book, it's the Bone Collector, not Bone Hunter, Bone Collector. I remember reading the books many years ago and um, <clears throat> enjoying them. And I've actually watched the series before, but I don't remember much about it. And because um, I, oh, I caught up on Prodigal Son. So, as well, yesterday. And I've on my third row of squares on my blankets I'm knitting or um, wrap or whatever else it turns out to be and it was really nice just to sit and do that because it's something I don't do often enough and I do enjoy from time to time doing such things I think when I've got the pressure of a deadline looming that I tend to focus on art constantly and feeling that if I'm not doing art all day, that I'm missing out somewhere on something. Um, and I tend to forget about other things I could do with my time and about relaxing in the evenings. But then again, I'm often busy in the evenings um, with various things on Zoom. Um, so, Remembering that I can still do other things like this is a good good idea for me. I still haven't had the templates to colour in for the book. No doubt I will in the goodness of time. And yes, I am trying different colours into the orange to see just how they react with one another and the kinds of mixes I get. Because again, this isn't, you know, it, it'll be finished, I guess, maybe. But it is more a way of me trying things out and seeing how what happens because I like to see what happens and these are new to me and um, that actually they actually working out quite nicely I think aren't they again you can always pass comments and leave comments in the boxes as long as um, I don't mind people saying oh I don't particularly like that myself but you know it's working or um, advice if you're familiar with these particular uh, media or whatever um, so you know I don't mind having some kind of criticism but um, I'm also aware that if I don't always none of us work exactly the same way with media and it's always nice when to recognise that, I think. You see, I'm trying to find my way with this and I think I'm beginning to understand how 
I like watercolours and things to work for me rather than against me. Um, or trying to work with things in a way that isn't necessarily my way of working. Well, this is reminding me very much of how I would add colour with digital art, really. And um, what's nice is being able to go back and say it's nice. I'm able to go back once it's dry and add lightly more colour. If I overwet it, I'm going to get bleeding again, but it's nice to be able to go and add further colour to deepen it. See, this one hasn't dried fully, so I don't know if you noticed that the, the ink, the paint, I'm not sure what to call this, whether they're watercolour inks or watercolour paints. Whichever. The, the dyes, I suppose. Um... do move quite nicely. Not all of them. Some are a bit more grabby of the paper than others. But not all of them. So that's all a bit interesting, isn't it? Yeah, especially as it's all upside down. That's because I turn the paper to make it comfortable for me to work. So I'll let those dry before I do stems and things and let's move over here. I'm going to leave those alone for a moment you know, because I can go back and fill those in. I suspect the gills underneath are going to be in oranges, oranges and yellows. I do need some yellows that are deep. That's chartreuse. Chartreuse is a kind of yellowy green or a very slightly green and yellow. It's a funny colour. I'm going to put some of the deep yellow over here because I think that would mix nicely with the siennas. Ochres, even. Oops. Try putting the right end of your brush in the water. It's a day already. I have been awake for a while. I woke just before six o'clock, I think it was. And um, to say that I'm not with it and could have done with sleeping longer, but I think it's just beginning to warm up that little bit too much. In fact, it's getting quite warm here now. So again, today is likely to be a day where I'm not around on the computer very much, which is a good thing for me. But what I may do is take um, sketchbooks and things downstairs because I do want to get some sketches of other things into my books, if I into my sketchbook if I can. I'm particularly interested in doing some cute whimsical birds at the moment. I think that'd be fun to do, um, just to test things like this out, I suppose, more than anything. And um, ooh, just a bit of that, and just seeing what I can make of all of this, I suppose. Um, Bit more of that just behind there for some shadow or darker area. We just need a damp brush just to pull some of this colour out, I think. Might need just a bit more of it. I'm also using this to test mixing these colours to see how that works as well. Yeah, I've added too much of the dark, but if, as long as I keep it damp. I'll be able to blend that out. I'm working on watercolour paper is lovely with these. I did try them in my sea white sketchbook, but boy, do they grab the paper there. They don't want to move once they're, they're down. That's for sure. Okay, dokes. A little bit more of the yellow here. I quite like this pen, even though it's not disappearing, but it's that kind of, um, it's a softer, less, um, a more, I don't know, warmer, neutral colour, perhaps. I mean, I just grabbed one out of my box and um, 
of a fairly neutral colour. If you're interested, I think it's NU4, which means nude number four. Um, colour nude. And it's it's fine, but I know I've got paler, paler versions or paler colours in there that would vanish even more. You can see though where I've wet this line it does sort of like dissolve into the colour, especially around here. So I think I might just want to pop a bit more yellow on this one because it's looking a bit on the bit brownie perhaps. Some golden yellow would really lift it there. there go. These are translucent, none of them are opaque, none at all because they're all dye based. So they let when you add colour on the top they really do layer and add to one another. They'll never become opaque, not unless you add an opaque medium to them like um, gouache, gouache, gouache. However it's said, I've heard it said so many ways. The opaque watercolour paints. I've never ever got on with gouache. Um, I did many, many years ago for a friend's daughter who was heavily into dinosaurs. I actually wrote a little story in a poem and um, had two dinosaurs in there called Izzy and Lizzie. And Izzy was a vegetarian dinosaur because the girl I wrote it for was also vegetarian. And about smelly socks and cheese and goodness knows what. It was very silly. But I actually created the um, the story for the girl and all the funny things because she had she loved cheese she had stinky socks she loved dinosaurs and all of these things and I illustrated it and I used gouache gouache colors to do that but I used them in pan form um, made by Karen Dash and they were such beautiful vibrant colours and they weren't completely opaque. Um, they were more they was they were more opaque. They were more you got more colour into them than I, I could with watercolour. So I ended up with very vibrant um coloured illustrations. And um she loved it apparently. I've still got I think I've still got I've got the originals here, I think so. Could be wrong. I can't remember if I gifted the originals um, to her. But um that was fun to do. But they were very simple illustrations, basically, you know, sort of like like this, I suppose, simple colours, um, just with shad simple shadowing and my style of work really and um, so that one is the brighter coloured brown isn't it so Looks. I've got all these ones. Now that one there, I've added too much water and you can see how the dark colour's been pushed to the edge. But I'm going to leave that as it is, as I have in other places here, because I have got that variation in these. Because um, later on, I may come back to these and add details with fine liner pens or white gel pens and so on. I don't know yet. Now I'm going to use some very light colour to add colour and shadow to the stalks. I did mix an interesting colour with some purple yesterday. It's, it is, it's a, I suppose it's a colour that you could describe as mushroom, but the purple actually does make quite a nice shadow colour with this. And I think that's something I read somewhere and it stuck with me. Don't ask me where I read it or how long ago. 
which I've never really put into action, but complementary colours when mixed actually create a colour that works well as a shadow for them. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. So yeah, so this is um, so this here is more to do with me trying out these colours than anything else and different things. So um, mushrooms or insects are, seem to be my go-to things at the moment, but I my mind is ticking away at other things. So um, phone. Something's pinged in, most probably email. Um, but it's just nice when I have new media, is to work with them and get a sense of how they work and have that embedded in my head rather than flitting back and forth between different media. That is rather on the darker side, but. I can live with that, especially if I add water on one side and then go kutush. Nope, that didn't work. It's fine though. It will be fine. Just got a couple more to do. So if I just pop, right, oh, I picked some blue up there, but that's okay because that will, this happens and um, I'm going to let it be because that will add it's one of those sort of like um, happy accidents or little, acts, little creative opportunities because I've, I've seen that happen in work or perhaps it's in one of the books I've got where allowing colour from one section next to the other to blend in sort of like tie, helps to tie them together this pen is not disappearing as much as I was hoping it would in the um, in this work but that's okay because in you know any others I do now in my next test piece perhaps I can try a different color out one that's paler again yeah I've got greys as well, I've got warm greys, dark greys, muted colours, not so muted pastels and so on. So I've got lots of different colours from all of these sets to try out and see which work the best. Yeah, actually those stems look quite nice, don't they? If, even if I say so myself. And this is an imaginary drawing illustration. I'm sure the mushrooms are based on real mushrooms. In fact, I'm sure they are because I drew them. But... Um, There's also something, you know, it's something nice to be able to do things like this. Okie doke, so where do I go next? Because I want to leave these to dry. I've got some here that have got zigzaggy patterns on. They look like weird Easter eggs. Okay. So try. Because again, because it's just testing these out, then I can. Do what I want. This is, um, I think this one's burnt sienna. I'm almost positive it is. It takes a little while for me to learn the names of paints. These ones, though, aren't quite so difficult to learn as watercolours. Not quite sure why. Perhaps it's because there's not so many of them. And also I'm trying to remember what the names are, and which ones I used, because the, the lids aren't always um, a really good colour match for them. So it's nice to be able to know what the colours are so that if I need to add more of the colour when I run out, because I'm not putting a huge amount of colour down here. I can say that quite happily. Um, because if, if I wanted a lot of uh, one colour out, so I'd have to cover a large area of the palette. So it's just as easy to add a little bit when it runs out or when 
I need that little bit more. But to do that, I need to know which colour is which because they also dry to a dessert different colour. So I've got the vermilion red here, which is which dries to this aki brown. But I know that now, so I can identify it. So I'm wittering on here. Um, because really, there's not a lot going on with me at the moment in terms of um, doing anything much outside of art and knitting. And um, you know, apart from the usual everyday sort of like um, life stuff, I suppose. I'm keeping myself to myself still and um, not going out much. Um, schools broke up yesterday here in the UK and Wales, so the summer holidays have begun, so the world will become full of um, people in the day um, and so on. So. Uh, I'll be okay there. Not exactly what I wanted, but it'll, you know, once it's dried, I can always go back in and I, I am being cautious now to make sure these really, really do dry. And of course, I can change what colours I use for the others because it's all about trying things out here. I'll try and put a base coat down of a a flat wash, suppose, I suppose, of um, one colour. That one at the top's a lot deeper, but it's fine. Put a bit, bit up there just to make that edge that little bit deeper. And then I can go and use some of these colours to add shadow to the edges. Just work it in so we get some change of colour. And oddly for me to use browns, but it's just, um, I just want to see how it works really more than anything. And of course it depends what colours I put next to it now, don't I? So these could almost be, um, it's almost getting a coppery feel there, almost. It's not pinky enough for copper really. Old copper? Possibly. Copper on its way to tarnishing. But saying that about pink, that is something I can always make an adjustment for. Or adjust in a moment, because it'd be quite fun to do that, I think. See, I'm just trying, using a very damp, slightly damp brush just to help ease those colours. And I am going to go here and add, oh, one well, I've added orange there, doesn't matter. Once that's dry, I'll go back and add colour to the edges and darken those up again. Because um, I think I'd, I'll be able to get some level of quite you know, intense contrast. Again, if I really wanted to get more contrast to these, then I can do things like um, use pencils or ink tents on top. Um, I'm not sure whether I want to do that because I quite, even though the the contrast from dark to light, shadow to highlight isn't so intense on these, I think it's something I'm going to have to accept about the medium or the way I'm working with this medium perhaps. And I'll be fine with that. That isn't necessarily a problem or anything for me. It's just working out that I, I say a problem, it has been in the past. But it is just accepting the medium for what it is and what I can do with it. And that's not always something that I found easy because I think as I'm talking, I think, and I say I think a lot because I am literally thinking out loud. But that may be the reason I've had so much trouble with watercolour is I'm trying to make it do things that it's not necessarily intended for, the medium. Um, to get these huge differences in dark and light. I know people can do that with dry brush techniques and so on, but I just can't seem to get that to work. So, um, learning to use things in a, 
in a different way and accept the limitations of medium and learn to work within that is something I can do. And this is, you know, it, it's working for me in its own little way, I think. Now then, what colours do I put with these? Mm. I think I'm going to go to my favourite turquoise because that should really... may just pop against these and I'm beginning to realize that where I'm putting this color down and it's touching the other colors I'm getting this darker darker edge which I again I quite like because it gives that feeling of um, of an edge a distinct edge that isn't a black line that is made up of the, the colours that I'm using. And it looks perhaps a little bit more natural, I don't know. But it seems to be, I've put too much water here. Dang nabbit, as I talk. It's okay, dry the brush, pick the extra water up with the brush. Tap it off on a tissue and all will be fine and well. It will. And for me as well, finding and working with the right size brush for the size of um drawings or paintings or motifs or designs whatever i'm doing the areas that i'm using is also important because um what works i suppose for one person doesn't necessarily work for another and definitely using smaller brushes is the way to go for myself because it really does give me an element of control over where and how I add colour. Which is important. So I think I'm going to be more or less, I say giving up, but recognising that wet in wet loose watercolours aren't really my, my style as much as I love them what other people do it just doesn't feel right for me when I do work with them. I don't know if I'm more of an illustrative artist than I am anything else, even when I'm doing abstracts. I don't know. And does it matter? Do we need labels? There's a philosophical question, I guess. Do people need to be labelled in life? Well, the answer is I don't know. As I'm working with these, I'm actually reminded a bit of, um, I used to have sets of, or set of acrylic inks. I think they were the FW acrylic inks. And they're nice to work with, but they dry so darned fast as well. And once they dry, they're permanent, so you can't re-wet them and remove them, um, move them around and so on. And part of me is thinking, oh, perhaps I ought to get some of those to experiment with. And I'm thinking, no, Angela, no, this is the way to go, girl. <laughs> This is, this is working for you. Let's stick to that, is it? And I think that might be actually the right approach for me to take, to be honest. Is to stick with what I'm enjoying at the moment and accept that this and a couple of other media, of traditional media, may be the ones when, you know, ones for me to go. I may look at getting some distress markers um, for drawing with. Um, not the whole set, just some of the colours. Because I can remember those were, they, they tend to have a very hard tip on them though, and much thicker than the chameleon, so perhaps not. But they would um, work quite nicely in many ways with um, 
with water they would disappear very easily and I'm also thinking about because I've got a plain background here but it'd be quite nice to have a coloured background so I may try adding distress ink as a background colour and then paint on the top knowing that the distress inks will lift and mix with these colours but so little distress ink will colour a background it doesn't have too much of an effect on the colours so that's something else I want to try and I may do that um, in a while and I think this is where I'm going to leave this one for today just move it down a little bit and um, I'll continue working on this and I'll show you this when I finished it or perhaps come back when I start adding um, embellishments and I need to decide whether I do that with my insect because I love my insect but I've got lots of ideas here now I want to start working on and trying out so yeah so this I'll must probably put to one side but I know what I'm doing here very strange colours here I need to do something about that brown I want it a bit, perhaps a bit more orange would work but um but at the same time you know it is what it is and I'll, I'll work out how to how to make things work a bit better say the embellishments may add to it you know, white gel pen perhaps some um, glaze or some colored gel pens or um, fine liner pens to add some texture and, and pattern I'll see how it goes I don't know yet um, but it's going to be another fun one to do we'll see what happens so I'm just going to say thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you're a returner, thank you so much. I appreciate you continuing to pop back and support me. If you're new to the channel, I hope you'll come and visit again. And thank you to all those um, people who've subscribed to the channel as well. Um, my aim is to get 100 subscribers so I can actually change the channel to Artword, the name of it in, in the YouTube thing so that you know it's not just a random list of letters and numbers but you know because then it will tie in with all my other social media um an art word is the name of my business um you know for because i have to register myself as a business but you know with, with the inland revenue over here the tax people and so um i use art word all over the place um anyway i witter on so thank you so much Whatever it's like for you, wherever you are in the world, whatever time of the day it is, please enjoy the rest of your day and days until we meet once again. Please take time to be creative, however or whatever creativity means to you, whether it's writing, drawing, painting, gardening, cooking, knitting, sewing, cross-stitching, fixing things, making new things, sculpting, whatever it may be. Take time and enjoy the process. And please take care. Speak to you soon. Ta-ra.